Eight Ways to 3D Scan Long before I got my first 3D printer, there's one thing I've really always wanted to do, and that's take a picture of something and print it out. We printed a whistle! <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that most of us with 3D printers, we've all had this exact same thought. But there's always been that huge barrier to entry price. Since it's a new year, I decided to try again on some of those apps. But not only that, this time I'm going to do it right. I'm going to run some comparisons and see if any of them are worth using and possibly even spending my money on them. And I'm going to share all that with you. For my testing, scanning is going to be really simple. I'm going to use the same little chess piece on a turntable if possible, and I'm going to use the same background. I'm also going to use default settings in every app, and if everything goes well, I'm going to print it out. And keeping it simple and fast, I'm going to be printing at 50% of the original size uh, in standard quality with 15% lightning infill in Bamboo Studio on a Bamboo P1S. Based on the app, as it is when you download it, and that's hopefully completely free, I'm going to give each app a score of 0 to 10 using these five categories. Now I have seven of what seem to be the top mobile scanning apps, but then I'm going to show you a completely different way to scan that doesn't require a dedicated app on your phone other than your built-in camera. And I'm going to score it the same way, and you might be surprised at the results. First up is WIDAR, and I'm just going to get this out of the way right off the bat. No free exports or downloads and no free trial. And considering you can't even try out a print, the cost is pretty steep. It's $9.99 a month and $69.99 annually. So why even mention it? Well, the scans are exceptional. Not only does it look great on my phone, it completely removed the turntable and any background that was picked up. Super easy to get into and start scanning. Unfortunately, without paying for it, I don't appear to be able to do anything more than just look. So while my scan turned out great, I really don't know how it'll print. Now, Polycam is pretty well known in mobile 3D scanning. You may have even tried this one yourself. It's very easy to get started with your scan and they allow you 20 20 scans to give it a try. The default setting is 20 pictures and that's medium resolution and while the chess pieces look great it also picked up a good bit of the turntable and some artifacts across the top so that'll need to be cleaned up. On the free version you're only allowed to download your scans in the open source GLTF format. While it's not widely used I was able to open it up in the Windows 3D Builder and save it as an STL. Dropped it in my slicer and it looked pretty good. And I must mention that this print was one of the few that gave me a really big print. Most of them came in super small. And after a few minutes of cutting off as much of the artifacts as I could, I sliced and printed. The print came out really nice. It's fairly sharp with the edges all the way around and the top looks really nice. Well, the price of this one actually is a lot worse than WIDAR, but on the plus side, they do have a seven day trial that gives you access to everything, including all the export formats. X1's kind of new and kind of different. The interface feels kind of Windows-like, which, you know, it's not necessarily bad, just different than your normal mobile experience. It appears that you're allowed to scan up to three times a day, every day, which is pretty awesome, at least until you find out you can only download once. Not once a day, just once. The scan looked pretty good on the phone and I used my one and only one download and that let me download as an OBJ, yay. And I really like that it tells me it put it in the download folder, except it didn't go into the download folder. <laughs> I went into the app, clicked on the download section and it showed me the actual folder which is buried down inside that Android data folder and as you know some of you maybe uh, that's one of those areas you're not supposed to go to because you can really mess up your phone. Well the print came out fine. I did feel there was some lost detail the further I moved down the print so it's possible I messed up except the render actually looked really good. Not sure how I feel about this one. It feels kind of like a game a little bit, and there's definitely some work to be done on that interface. Well, remember when I said X1 kind of felt game-like in his interface? <laughs> 
This next app was created by none other than Epic Games. Reality Scan is really interesting. It's a no frills app that just gets you right into scanning. And it's automatically ready to go with auto scan, but apparently it'll just keep scanning forever until you stop it. So it's not really clear and they don't give you a whole lot to go on there. There's some interesting options with this one, like a point cloud that may be of interest to the Blender artist, but not so much for 3D printing. After a few post-processing screens, I was a little surprised to see I had to fill out a description page and sign up. But it wasn't too bad, but then the next page required me to create a Sketchfab account so I could process and share the scan. After that, I was able to view that chess piece online on the Sketchfab website, and it wasn't immediately clear if I could download it, and first I thought I was gonna have to pay, but scrolling down gave me options to download in four formats, FBX, USDZ, GLTF, and GLB. Well, I opted for GLTF. I opened and converted it using the 3D Builder in Windows, dropped it in the slicer, and printed. The edges are okay. They seem a little rounded over, though. I think this would work fine for most things, but then I noticed something a little off. I compared it to some of the other prints and realized that Reality Scan had lost some weight around the middle, which is kind of weird. <laughs> well, regarding the price, I had to do a bit of online searching for verification, but my initial thought was correct. This is free. That also explains some of the hoops having to upload it to Sketchfab, which is an issue just that first time. Magiscan has something I didn't expect. Not only does it have automatic and manual modes for scanning, it has a Minecraft mode. So for anyone like my IT teacher son who loves the game, you can scan an object in real life and then export it right into Minecraft. Uh, while I play Minecraft occasionally, I didn't try out this feature. The fact that it's there though tells me it does work to at least some extent. The interface is nice and it's simple with everything you need. Unfortunately, you only get three scans to try out the app. Well, unless you're willing to go on X, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, those types of things and repost one of their posts on your feed. When you share that link and a review form, they'll bump you up to 10 more free scans. Well, this one has two main modes, camera and auto. I opted for auto, which is made for beginners. And I did run into a few problems getting the scans to work a little bit. But uh, the biggest issue was my light box with turntable is apparently a no-no. Looking on their website, they give you quite a few instructions on getting the best scan, which is great. But apparently there's no movement of the object while scanning. So I abandoned the light box for a piece of foam board on the kitchen table and I walked around it holding the phone out. There's a limited number of photos in the free version, but after a few minutes, I did get this scan to work. And then, eight hours to process, yikes. When I finally got my scan, wow. The render, I honestly, it just looked incredible. Now if only this export and print looked nearly as good. They have a lot of export options for all different uses, but you know, we're here for the STL, so after a quick download and move over to the computer, drop it in the slicer, and the quality of the edges and the details, they're just bad. As you see, it's very rounded everywhere. There's no clear features at all. I did have to increase the size by over 300% to get it to that right height, but still printed slightly smaller than it should have. Now the premium mode does give you faster processing speeds and most notably the ability to take up to 200 photos to use for your scan and they even allow using drone footage. But premium is premium. $5.99 a week, $18.99 a month, $99.99 a year, or you can do a lifetime purchase for $399.99. Clone has a more professional way of scanning than most of the others. The biggest difference being that they provide you a free printable mat for you to put your object on. And there's even a background mat that goes behind it, lines up with the bottom. The goal is to give you the most accurate and best possible scan, and that's great. The interface itself looks great, and it was really easy to get right into the scan. Unfortunately, that's where everything comes crashing down. After many many, many attempts to scan my chess piece. Nothing worked. I finally broke down and I contacted the company for advice. Well, they emailed back a few days later saying they were very sorry for the troubles and wondered if I have a friend with an iPhone that I could borrow. Sorry, I don't. 
Just so you know, I did download this from the Google Play Store onto my Android phone, so it's not just some random app I found on the internet. And based on that email, in my opinion at least, it means they know the Android app doesn't work. Instead of just giving a score, I'm going to skip clone. Uh, if any of you have tried it out, please let us know what you think about it in the comments. Well, if you've looked into scanning for 3D printing other than Polycam, you've most likely heard of Kiri Engine. And this app's really well laid out and functions super smoothly. There's a social media tab with all the links, but fortunately that's not shoved down your throat. The community aspect is one of the coolest features though. There's a weekly staff pick of user uploads that apparently, once they put it on there, you have access to that forever. And while it's neat to see what other people are scanning, I think the best part of it is it emails you a download link for free all in one zip file of those scans or yours. And they give you pictures, both high and low res OBJ files. And this is also available on their website. The scanners while we're here though, so that works really well. Unlike most of the other apps, clicking the plus sign to scan immediately gives you information on the best scanning techniques. And then it makes things pretty obvious with three different scanning options. Take photos, auto capture photos, or photos on a timer. Next, I tried the timer feature at one second, and actually this seemed to work really well. After just a few minutes, I hit the free cap of 70 pictures and I uploaded them to be processed. Then after a bit, I got an email and downloaded my new files. They sent both normal and low resolution versions. Drop the normal one in the slicer and I noticed the first big or little problem as you can see. The file they sent me was only 10 millimeters tall. And there's also the issue of it being completely hollow, but with small version, that was a pretty quick fix to repair in my slicer. Well, this one required me to size it up by a whopping 757%, and that got me to my target height of 76 millimeters, like the rest of them, and that just made the other problems easier to see. The quality of the print after resizing it looked good in the slicer, and compared to the previous apps, the print itself looked great. The most telling part to me was the sharpness of the leaves toward the bottom. None of the other apps had quite this level of detail, and that's great. Other than the free version only allowing you a one-time export for free, this is actually a really solid scanning app. It's probably the easiest to use by far, especially for a first-time user, and with this one print, the quality is really the best yet. Now, last but definitely not least, I have a web-based scanner that literally just came out not too long ago. Maker World has brought a lot of innovation to 3D printing with its database and the website, but the Maker Lab section is really upping the whole game. The new AI scanner allows you to upload video, convert it, and get a 3MF or STL of your file all for free and they make it really easy for anybody to get into 3D scanning with a lot of easy to understand instructions and helpful tips. And the one thing they don't tell you, and I'm going to pass it along to you now, is the program doesn't really like high resolution or long videos. I went a little overboard with my first attempt and it wouldn't even upload. Instead of emailing me or something like that, I had an instant option to download a 3MF or an STL file. Well, I drop that file into the slicer and once again have that small problem, but this one was a quick resize by only 270% and we're back to target. From what I can see in the slicer, this isn't the cleanest looking file, but the details are all there, even those tiny stars around the top. The biggest issue I had though was the base. I don't understand why there are gaps in the base when I didn't even film the underside. It would have made more sense for it to be hollow, but at least it is closed. And also it's just ever so slightly crooked, but fortunately Bamboo Studio made that extremely easy to line up, so it's back straight. I did decide to chop the base a little bit to make it flat and not need supports, and then I printed it out. Well, the print for AI scanner is probably my favorite so far out of all of them. The leaves and those stars that I've mentioned before, well, they're really nice. And that top area, the crown, this is by far the closest to the original and there's no excessive blurring into the different parts. The only real problem I noticed was the overhang near the top where some printing issues came into play. But honestly, on the other prints, well, that area isn't sharp or defined as this print, so not surprised to see it on this one. It actually made me a little more confident in the scan. And the price? Free? Well, 
that's surprising as well. Well, this was a fun and frustrating project. I honestly expected more options. So here's my results. And I tried to be as objective as possible. And I'm gonna start with best print quality. And that's really the most important thing. <laughs> that's why we're here. Polycam came in third. And Kiri Engine and Maker World both had great prints and I had them tie for first. But probably the next most important score, at least for me, that's price. And these were all over the place. Third place was a tie between X1 and Kiri, both of which had decent free options as well as a pro option that didn't require getting a second job. But you can't beat free, right? And that means that Reality Scan and Maker World both came in first for price. Well, coming into this, I knew Polycam and Kiri were really popular and I had really high hopes for them, but they both fell a little short in a few key areas. And as far as dedicated phone apps go, Reality Scan has a great price free and it's really solid. I think it's worth a look if you want to stick to just your phone, that's probably your best way to go. But with the ability to just film your object, upload to a website on your phone or computer, and then get a great looking scan in a 3MF or STL all for free, well, I don't think Maker World AI Scanner can be beat, at least not right now. Well, there's probably more than a few scanners that I missed, and I'd be happy to try them out. So leave a comment for everybody down below with your thoughts about them so we can all give them a try and see what we think. I look forward to hearing from you in this lab as we all continue to learn, create, scan, and amaze.